Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. We're having a little meltdown right next to us. The, the babe um, is having a meltdown? You know how it is. What's oh, the oh. baby? Oh. <laughs> Hi. Is, Hi. This is a very seamless dial-in. How are you? I know. Usually it takes me like two tries to get on. No, we're um, good. We're good. I tried to position my kitchen. You like it? I do like do you it. Like, my stove top is right here. I'm going to be moving. Do you like my Story oh. and Rain mug? I do. I appreciate it. Do you that. like the fact that your book is right here as well? Woo! So exciting. I'm so excited. Do you excited. like the fact that my book is right here as well? I know. I love it. I love it's it. It's pretty surreal, I have to say. Can you believe it's finally here? I was going to say, you know, actually, that's one of the things that I wanted to say to you, Eden, is that... Um, I think that your fans, it, I think it's a really good time to be, um, you know, launching your book. I think your fans are, pu you know, no pun intended, but they're hungry to get an arsenal of your recipes. I think it's like perfect timing, actually. Oh, good. Well, you know what? I feel like everyone's at home right now cooking and um, to be able to like release these recipes that I've worked so hard on for the last yeah. like, three years and to kind of just give people some, you know, a, a little bit like different inspiration, some new ingredients some new flavors, something to kind of, I guess, liven up their everyday food. Um, I'm really, really happy about that. Like this, this is very easy, approachable everyday food that yeah. I really want people to be able to comfortably, you know, make in their home. So that's why I love doing these lives because we're going to be able to make this. Or, yeah. Do you hear her? I do hear oh. her. Poor Ave. Um, Ave's no, having a free just upset because She's just upset because she's not having like gummy bears after she went to the bathroom. Like that's, that's like her thing. She's like, I want a gummy bear now. We're like, <laughs> it's not dinner. Um, oh, anyway, sure. thank you so much for yeah, of course. Um, having me on. Of course. I'm excited to do this. I mean, you said that this book was a long time coming. I remember that because I remember talking to you about this a while ago, but I do feel that it's perfect timing, actually. Like everything is, it, the, synchroni the synchronicity is perfect. I think people are really looking to get these recipes from you at this exact time. How long did it take you to create the book? I, How long have you been working on it? From I've start been to working finish? on this book for like two and a half years. Um, uh, like I remember when I first got this book deal, my, uh, my friends who have written books wrote, told me, they're like, just get ready. It's a very emotional process and it's going to feel like you're basically birthing like a child. So every time I post about the book, I'm like, I birthed my book, baby. I know. Um, I love it. I was like, I've been following all of your posts and you're like, book baby is here. I'm like, that's just so perfect. Book baby is here. Like. It goes through so many different like emotions because you have all these ideas, then you recipe test, then you recipe, no, you recipe develop, then you recipe test, then you edit the book, then you shoot the book. You have to like pick a team that like you like are obsessed with and then you have to edit it and you have to look through a lot of stuff. There's, there's a lot of different steps and stages and a lot kind of, kind of like building a website it sounds very familiar yeah it takes a village too like that's something that I always like tell people like obviously my name's on the book but I have someone who co-wrote it with me Rachel Holtzman Aubrey Peck's an amazing photographer Kaylin Kaminsky's an incredible uh, prop stylist like there it's so many different people coming together, collaborating, and creating something. The great. pictures are so important too, wouldn't you say? I'm such a visual person. Like me, the book, the pictures are as important as the recipes being amazing, right? I agree. Well, I, I've always said this about you, and I feel like we've talked about this before, is that with your cooking comes a very distinct style oh. and a very, you know, a, 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 obviously a very clear point of view but a style and a stylishness. And so oh, I think that's yeah. very much part of your food. And that's why we're doing, um, so for everybody that's in the chat, we are posting a, a, an article featuring five, sorry, not five, but four of Eden's recipes this Sunday and paired with some really gorgeous tabletop home decor, um, because I feel like your food is just very stylish. It's, Thank you, you know, kind of fresh and new and it's a, it's a stylish way of eating and 
They're well, coming for from you, coming from you, that's a really big compliment. So thank you. Well, oh, thank you. Thank um, you. But no, truly, I think that your food is very fresh and very modern and very of the moment. But talk, talk a little bit about the creative process, Eden. What, what's involved in putting a gorgeous book like this together? Like to just show there really are some beautiful, beautiful yeah, photos. I'm gonna get one as well. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. All I do is look through it like a crazy person. Well, of course. Um, but like the photo like this picture, when we first saw it, I knew immediately that was gonna be the cover just because I feel like it really captures you know, my energy, like how I like to sit around the table and eat. There's like this. Be, yeah, we like, it's bountiful, it's colorful. There's always like, this is, well, that's the same picture. There's always going to be like condiments. I love tahini, harissa. Food. I mean, you are a sauce girl beyond. I love sauce. I've spent like, days making your sauces, Eden. But how good. Look at this. How good. They really do And how add. easy. How easy was it? easy and good they really add something to a meal like look at this schnitzel sandwich oh is that, is that what that is amazing Sh sesame schnitzel with harissa honey slaw on harissa a honey. just like a like a nice potato roll honestly this is oh this is another really great one the shawarma the yeah shawarma and then like and, and the pita and obviously there's Edo. Well, that's right? that's another thing that I wanted to point out about the book is that there's a lot of pictures of you and your family and your lifestyle. Yeah. Bringing it back to what I was saying is that, you know, um, your brand and your food is kind of also about like stylish and easy entertaining and eating. So it's fun to see your family in all those photos. Thanks, Boo. Um, that means a lot. But so you, did you do a lot of meetings, a lot of art direction meetings and... Honestly, I met with Kaylin once. She came into my home. She looked at like all of my pots, like all of my dishes. And I think she kind of just like got a sense for my- See, aesthetic. but that's the interesting part. I think people would love to hear that, that she actually came into your cooking space and oh, took, and took stock of what's there, what it looks like. Yeah, basically she came in and she just like, took all of the, um, like looked at all of my dishes, got a sense of the kind of style that I have. Obviously, like I collect per like I collect rugs from Morocco and I love Persian rugs and I love, you know, specific material and lots of like um, uh, pottery. So she really like picked that up. Plus like I'm obsessed with anything like vintage 70s. So I feel like she was able to capture a little bit of that. Gorgeous. Um, and uh, and then we and then we just you know she pulled and we got on set and Aubrey has an amazing eye the photographer and together like we just started putting you know Chelsea um, my food stylist was there with me we were plating she had like an amazing like final touch like honestly the team was just beyond exceptional and I learned a lot from everyone oh I bet. Um, and I just really feel very fortunate that everyone was available to work on my book when- It's so exciting. Yeah, when it was time. So yeah. anyways, I want to actually, are you ready? Do you want to start cooking while we talk? We can. How do you feel about that? No, you're a, you're a pro at that. And um, how do you yes. feel about that? Let's start cooking. Let's start cooking. Let's do it. Okay, so I want to talk about, this is the green shakshuka, the very green shakshuka. And- um, I love the ingredients I use here. I'm a really big fan of fennel. I really love that sweet anise flavor that you get from the fennel. I put a lot of onions that create a really sweet, um, kind of a chunky saute sauce. And um, I obviously saute some Swiss chard. And if you don't have Swiss chard on hand, you can use kale, you can use collards, honestly, any like kind of uh, leafy um, green would be perfect here. So. Did you pre-chop everything? Oh, I have my mise all set up for you. You got your mise en place. I also got a beer. I don't know if you're having any wine or anything. Or um, maybe I sh maybe I should. Well, I just listen. I love to have a drink. While maybe I, I should pour a little pour a little tequila in my coconut water. What? Well, I maybe you should. I wouldn't <laughs> say no to that ever. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll wait well, for you then. Let, I'm let me do. Let me do that and be right back. Okay gonna sit here and smell this amazingly delicious beer actually this is a really cool brand uh, Midtown Brewing Company I'm in Toronto right now and oh. this is Cheers. Uh, Cheers. 
This is from Prince Edward County from a brewery there. Sorry, just I was going to say that beer can looks epic. What is, is that? that? Beautiful? Cheers, baby. It's beautiful. Cheers. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Um, okay, so what I also really love about this dish is I have a chapter called Eggs All Day, and I am a really big fan of eating eggs any time of the day. I cook eggs for dinner all the time, which is perfect because dinner is now. So Can I ask you a question? When was the last time you made eggs for dinner? Can you remember? Um, yesterday. Oh, literally. Okay. Oh, literally. I am a big, like, I'm a big fan. It's super, obviously, cheap protein. Um, but I love eggs because you can really do anything with them. And it, you just have to dress it up differently. And you can make it, like, obviously super sexy for a dinner um, and not just for breakfast or brunch. So, and I like that you picked this one because it's obviously like on the healthier side. Uh, well, I love all the green. I love all the herbs. Um, there's yeah. cilantro, there's parsley. Oh, we go, we go ham with the, with the herbs. So I just put my pan on. Turn, are you, do you have your stove on? Uh, now I do. Okay, stove on, olive oil in. Okay. Add olive oil, okay? Put around like, I think two tablespoons, two, three tablespoons. You want to get that nice and warm. And obviously what's super great about chukchuka as well is it's really great because you can scale this recipe easily. Um, you can simply just add more eggs, make some more space, or you can reduce the amount of eggs. Like I like to make this amount of greens and then you can put half in the fridge and reheat in the morning and put two eggs versus four um, and cook just like a meal for yourself. Or right. you can put four eggs and cook for two people. Well, what no. I was going to say was one of the things, Eden, um, that you mentioned in our article that's posting on Sunday is that you like to take pots and pans directly to table for serving. Yes. And that's actually what I love about this one that I have here, because that's what that is. Well, that's a beautiful pot. It can go in the refrigerator, it can be on the stovetop, and it can go to the table, right? It's a beautiful pot. Sorry, I just wanted to move this down a bit so you yeah. can see the cutting board. Um, Let's see the cutting okay. board. So I have all my meats. What we're gonna start off with is uh, one small uh, yellow onion and either a half of a fennel uh, chopped or a small fennel diced. So, so both together? Fennel, yes, put the fennel and the onion in together. So, oh, there you go. So I'm, and also do me a favor while we're making this, to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Oh, okay. So, wow, well, you know you're, really, you're really good at this cooking on camera thing, Eden. Oh, well, you know, I've been, I've been randomly doing it, you know, just to promote Just randomly book. doing it for years. Um, yeah, so if you know you need to put your dish in the oven, always preheat your oven before you start cooking so that by the time the food is ready to go in, you don't have to wait for your oven to warm up. It's already okay. hot. Right. Okay. So the second the onion and the fennel go in, we need to season now with salt and pepper. Okay. Okay. I'm using kosher salt. You can use sea salt. You can use pink Himalayan salt, whatever you have on hand. Um, and black pepper. I'm in my kitchen. I'm uh, sorry. I'm in my mother's kitchen doing my- I know. I love it. I saw your video the other day. Of you what? The I saw your video the other day of like the book baby toast. Yes. With, with everybody. I love your mother's kitchen. Isn't it so beautiful? It's, it's, it's so beautiful. I'm cooking in it because I still don't know where everything is. Yeah, I get that. All right, I'm just gonna stir this, right? Perfect. Yeah, so just saute it. And what you want to do here, here I'm just gonna, pretty loud. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. And what you want to do here is you want to like lightly caramelize, lightly, and just get those onions translucent. You want them to get nice and sweet um, because we're gonna. That, that's obviously a big part of the base of the shakshuka, right? I'm gonna grab. Hold on. I'm what up? Uh, here I am. There I am. Hello. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so we just want to saute this. Did you preheat your oven? Yeah. Okay, great. And what I like so much about, listen, a lot of people have been asking me about these dishes um, in the book. And 
Like for me, it's so important to be able to create recipes that any home cook can make. Um, and I really, really wanted this to be accessible to everyone. And I tried really hard not to put a lot of ingredients that are, that are difficult to find. I love that. I mean, yeah. I think like, I love, a, I love an intense cookbook that has exotic ingredients, but at the end of the day, like, are you really opening that? Like, are you really, you know, using that cookbook day to day? No, you're not. Well, that's the thing. I want this to be like an everyday cookbook. Yeah, it really is. It really yeah. is. And I feel like these flavors are very, very, like, you see them a lot these days. Like, you go to a restaurant, a lot of people have shakshuka, a lot of people are using tahini, a lot of sumac. You know, these are flavors that you're going to see more and more of. Right. Which will make it easier even to find in, like, right. a grocery store. And also, like, you know, I've made a few recipes of yours eaten at this point, and the couple that aren't you know, at every grocery store, you can get on Amazon in like a day. Like a oh, lot of, yeah. you cook a lot with Aleppo pepper and sumac, as you mentioned, and you can get that from Amazon for a couple bucks in, in a day's time, right? And that's happened to me many times. Um, and also like another thing that I want to keep telling everyone is obviously in the, in the, in the recipe that's calling for like specific ingredients, but you can also substitute with certain things. So like, let's say the calls for harissa. Harissa is a North African chili paste. Obviously I'm getting the heat from that. It does have a little bit more spice and flavor than like just a regular chili flake. But if you can't find harissa, you can also just put chili flakes. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course, yeah. It's about building in that heat. I just don't want people to not make dishes because they can't find the specific ingredients. Right, of course, of course. How's it looking? It looks good. How does it do? Uh, do you like fennel? I love fennel. So I'm Sicilian, so Sicilians love fennel. You what? So I'm, I'm Sicilian, and Sicilians, oh, since Sicilians eat a lot of fennel. Did I know that about you? Did I I'm know half you Sicilian? Sicilian? I, don't think, I don't think I don't think you did. I'm like dying to get to Sicily. Oh. You must make it there once this is all over. I hear it's amazing. It's amazing. So I'm just chopping up my um, chard. And it doesn't need to be too um, perfect because we're just going to saute it and we're going to end up steaming it. And then it's just going to wilt a little bit. But look how beautiful. Easy. Yeah, I'm going to. It's gorgeous. What did, what did you get, red shard or green shard? Yeah, red. Okay. My dad actually picked it up for me. I asked him that. Here's help. mine. Beautiful. Beautiful. So now, is your, are your onions and fennel starting to kind of caramelize a little bit? I mean, get color on it? Not necessarily, no. Yes, it so is. So maybe yes, turn it up a little it bit. Is. It is. But it looks like there's some magic happening over there. No, it's good. It's working. It's doing its thing. Okay, so now what we want to do is add in. Um, I'm going to add in the spices right now, okay? So we have coriander and cumin. And these are spices that you will find used over and over again in eating out loud. Uh, I love cumin for the earthiness. Um, uh, but I think a lot of people like don't know like how they feel about cumin. I've heard that a couple times. I think you have to just use a little bit less. So I try to use the spice like a little bit less aggressively. Um, and then coriander is just like beautiful, earthy with a little bit of that citrus back end um, flavor. Hey, baby. Ido, hey. Ido just walked in. Hello, Ido. Uh, say hi. Hey, Boo. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Oh my God, it's been so long, how are it's, you? I know, long time to see. Yeah, all good? Yeah, all good. Yeah. Are you, you having a good summer? Lady? What? Up with my lady? Yeah. Yeah, are you following I mean, along? Is that you doing? Yeah, you're sauteing onions right there, look at you. Um, yeah. How exciting is this book launch? I know, right? It's been crazy, so exciting. So cool. It's amazing, I'm so proud of her. She did such a good you job. Must save. <laughs> so wait, how much of each? Okay, so let's yeah. see what the menu, the menu, let's see the recipe. So 
So we have a teaspoon of ground cumin and half a teaspoon of coriander. And like here, a little goes a long way. You know what I mean? Okay. And I like to add the spices in at this point because the, uh, the oil is obviously uh, frying the onions and the oil is really hot. And that oil will release all the flavor and aroma from the spices. The second the spices hit the onion, it smells like incredibly delicious, okay? It, smell, it does smell really good, Eden. Um, after I add in the spices, I'm gonna add in the jalapeno. This is optional. If you guys don't like the heat, you don't need to add it. I'm putting the whole jalapeno in, like seasoned ribs in, because I love what it brings uh, to- I am doing that too. Yeah, it's just like, it's just a really nice bite. Edo had this dish for the first time the other day, and he was like, what is happening? What is this magic? And after I add in the uh, jalapeno, I'm going to grate in a clove of garlic, okay? You can- I, I have that ready. Can I put mine in now you or not? You're more prepared than I am. You know, just trying to be an editor about the whole thing. Um, I like I'm bringing my editor my game. I like to use a microplane grater. It's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. And it speeds things up. And you just grate that. Oh my God, the jalapeno. Do you feel that heat? Yep. Smells so good. Have you been cooking a lot? Yeah. I mean, I always do, but like in quarantine, I was like, have you gone to restaurants, Eden? Have you been to a bunch of restaurants yet or not really? Well, I'm in Toronto right now. Um, I came oh, so you're July, definitely going out. Um, to be with my parents because I miss them, A. And also, a pandemic with a toddler is very challenging when you don't have any ch childcare. Okay. And uh, both parents are working. So we came to stay with my parents so they could help us with Abe. Totally. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so we're in Toronto, but we actually have gone out to some restaurants and for me, like, it's so important to support all of your, uh, the local businesses, um, especially restaurants, you know, I agree there, you know, you just have to go and like, if you're not going to, if you're not capable of sitting outside, like doing some takeout, doing some delivery, um, you know, and I have like really made a conscious effort to. Um, just make sure that we order in as much as we can or go out as much as yeah, we can. Yeah, and I have so much respect and love for the people that are out there working right now, you know, working all day in restaurants, wearing masks. It's, it's, I, it's, it's incredibly challenging. Um, but I don't think that any of that is easy to, like, you know, walk around like and be outside inside outside inside with this mask like for so many hours and also like now it's warm and they have like not just patios but like some of them are able to kind of like make patios on streets but i think there's some some people are doing it so well yes you know, building a platform adding a canopy i mean some of them are really well done yeah it's, it's really impressive um so I think that it's just important to do that. And Are we doing first. anything with this just yet? Yeah, so I'm just, so, I, it's so funny. I keep like referencing my book because if it was just me, I'd be doing like my own like kind of thing. But I Yeah, just, like you're. Um, yeah, to put, let's put now, we're going to put the Swiss chard in with the cilantro and the parsley. And you'll find in this book, and make sure you mix it well with the onions and the fennel. It smells, I'm just saying, it smells really good. In here. It smells incredible. And just it's really the combination of well. everything. And in what it. I want to make sure that we do is season again with salt and pepper. Okay. Wait, what are we doing now? Are we seasoning or are we adding the greens? Add the greens in and then we're going to season with salt and pepper. Okay. And I'm going to bring my, I'll bring my camera over. It looks like really, really beautiful. There's so much. And you'll see in my book, the, the amount of greens that I use, it's pretty crazy, right? Well, Eden, what I wanted to say too is that you say that your style of cooking, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean cooking, obviously is very veg heavy. How often do you eat fish and meat? 
Um, you know, it's funny because I, I told you, though, since we've been to, in Toronto, I have had more meat and fish here than I've had in so long. Oh, really? Yeah, but, but in, in real life. Um, Is that because of your parents much. or because because of restaurant eating? When I eat out in restaurants, I eat whatever. I really, like, make a point to not, like, I have to eat everything. You know, like, whatever the chef brings me, I'm going to eat. Except for shellfish, because I just found out I have an allergy. But, like, what? At this, you're joking. Don't tell anyone. Oh, but I'm really upset for you, too. I know. I, I, it's actually really hard for me to admit. It's All like, shellfish? All shellfish? Not um, mollusks. Oh, so, so like mus that's a muscle. I can that's have muscle. mussels, oysters, clams. Thank God. Oh. Um, Thank God. Because spaghetti alla vongole is like one of my all-time favorite things. Yes. And oysters, please. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just feel like um, when I'm at home, Ido and I eat mostly vegetarian. Um, yeah. So we I, eat, like, that's what I wanted to ask you. I feel like you guys must eat mostly vegetarian we do eat mostly i just want to show everyone what's going on here oh, look at yours it doesn't look like mine and um, yours is beautiful see we do have I need any vegetable stock listen it's gonna start to st yes so now let's put the veggie stock or if you don't have veggie stock we're gonna put some water right in yes beautiful and then take the lid and cover it okay do you like that I just took this off the tripod and I'm taking you guys with me? What kind of um, medium heat, medium low heat, what is it? Well, let's keep it on uh, medium heat right now. I just put okay. the water in. I'll flip it around again. I just put the water in and I just want to make sure that I remove any of the bits that's stuck to the bottom. As you can yeah. see, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fennel in here. There's a lot of onion in here. Like I put a lot of yummy deliciousness because this is what you know is going to be the base of the shakshuka and obviously it's less saucy and more um chunky and very veg, veg it is yes but that's why adding the water or the stock to give it a little bit of that like juiciness and after yeah. you add it you cover it with a lid for a couple minutes so that it wilts a little bit more and the greens get a little bit more tender and then that's when we put the eggs in and then we throw it into the oven. Okay. And did you by any chance make your green tahini? Oh. Is that a yes or a no? That is a yes. Oh, you made the green tahini? You are amazing. And guess what, Eden? In your book, you say you can use dill, um, parsley, or uh chives and i use all all three and how how amazing is it this is the tastiest thing ever guys i was gonna say this. after i made it and i you know cleaned the blender and tasted it and i was like this is really i i get i get it you know it i get insane. it i get it um did you put your lid on your shakshuka oh yeah see okay Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the lid and we're going to make wells. How many eggs are you going to make? I mean, I'm going to go with four just because that's the recipe. Me too. Okay, so make four wells nicely and like evenly spaced, okay? And then what I want you to do is crack the eggs right into the well, okay? Okay. And as, do you think your oven's preheated? Uh, let's see. My oven's been on for like two hours. My mom's like, what is going on? I'm like, I mean, I should have put my oven on. No, it's not. I think I need more liquid. Put a little bit more liquid. You know, it also depends on the size of the pan. Because if the pan is really wide, um, you know, the greens are going to be more spaced out. I'm going to do a little more liquid and then make do my well. I'm going to bring my camera over so that you guys can see what this looks like. OK. Let's, Let's see. Check, check this out. Oh. 
Okay, wait, I'm, I'm not so, so that gorgeous. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I actually season the eggs with salt and pepper on top. So just okay, a little bit on. of salt. I'm, making, I'm still making my wells. I got you, baby. How did you crack those eggs so quickly? What can I say? I'm a profesh. You are. They were just, they were just available. They were like right there next to it. How did you do that so quickly? So I'm gonna, I had to put this phone on the tripod so I can see them with pepper. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to transfer this shakshuka right into the oven, okay? Obviously make sure you use a pan that can be in the oven so that it's heat proof. That's also why a Dutch oven is super great. Right. And so so right season right with now. salt and pepper, right? Salt and pepper the egg. Okay. And we throw it right into the oven. Do you see how fast this is? Yeah, it's a, it's very it's like a very big deal. <laughs> Super fast to put together. You can drink your wine. You can drink your beer. This takes like a what did I say? It takes three to five minutes at 350. It's pretty sweet. I'm gonna check on it in a couple minutes. And then we're gonna garnish this bad boy. And then guess what? Dinner's ready. Honestly, serve this with like fresh challah, pita, flatbread. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you. What else besides bread could you add to this meal to oh. make it a more complete meal? Like if you were having people over, what, what else would you serve this with? Um, so I, when I usually have people over, I like to take out like a bunch of dips and pickles and fun things that I keep in my fridge. And I do like an assortment of different dips so that people- I mean, you do the most beautiful boards. Talk about oh. your boards for a second. Oh my God. Well, you saw that crazy board I made for Kat's uh, shower. It was a, it was a rainbow. It was beautiful. Our friend Kat, has a very specific color aesthetic and so did her shower, right? And Eden's food was like a rainbow of bounty, right? That All was, on boards. That was actually funny. So I didn't actually put it on a board. I took like butcher paper. Butcher paper. I, that, I was going to say, I like that even more, actually. I took the I like butcher that even paper more. and I covered the entire table. It was like a kitchen, a long kitchen table. Butcher paper. And I put the cheese and meat and condiments and fruit and nuts directly right onto the butcher paper. And it was like, an, it, it felt like, like a little like world. And the it Parmesan, was, it was really I got like the biggest Parmesan chunk in the center of the table. It was like, so. I love that. I that love Parmesan that. That Parmesan chunk was like, so special. There's something about a large chunk of Parmesan cheese. And I've talked about this before. I feel like a broken record. One of the most memorable, the best fashion shows I ever went to was, well, first of all, he's my fav one of my favorite designers, but it was a Dries Van Noten show. And it was in this epic, you know, landmark building, obviously in Paris, this show, this fashion show. And before you went in to get your seat, there was this long, dramatic hallway with a long table filled with shards of Parmesan cheese and like lined on either side with the little cups of red wine. It was I the love chicest it. thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I love it. The thing. I love that European like way. You know? Yes. Are you having wanderlust right now? Do you want to be traveling? Eden? Oh, please. That's like probably one of my like, that's, that's like one of my favorite things to do in my life, period, is travel. So, you know, Ido and I actually, we had to cancel a trip to Japan right when- um, I think a lot of us did, yeah. Yeah, yeah right when, when COVID started, we had a trip, which this was our third time rebooking Japan. We were like, we're finally going to Japan. And the trip that was never meant to be, I don't know. Well, that's, there's two places that I've had to rebook several, like three, at least three, four times, Japan and Morocco. And oh, those are, I know, and those are two places that like, I've been wanting to go to the most. And it's crazy. It's like when, when I finally get there, it'll be such a celebration. Totally. 
Yeah, I just like, I can't wait. I'm so maybe, maybe that's Maybe that's the, maybe that's the point. Maybe you're meant to be in those places when you have more focus and things are more quiet. I don't know. Maybe. Um, maybe. Let, why don't you explain the components of shakshuka for people that may not know? Like what okay. are, what are, what is, what is shakshuka exactly? So and you obviously have, you have what, three shakshuka recipes in your book? Hold on, wait, one, two, I have four. You have four. So explain exactly what it is. So traditional shakshuka is basically like a tomato pepper sauce that you can spice however you want. And what you do is you poach eggs in the sauce. And there are many variations. I've made them with lamb meatballs inside. I've finished it with sheep's milk feta, different herbs, tahini, different kinds of tahini. It's really like a beautiful, perfect base to dress up in whichever way, way you want. I just love the concept of it so much. It's incredibly easy to make. It's super flavorful. It really packs a lot of punch. It's scalable and you can make it for one, you can make it for three, you can make it for 10. Um, and it's just like really a crowd pleaser. And it's just like, honestly, I can't say this enough. It's just super easy to prepare. So I really wanted to incorporate this concept in my Exalt Day chapter um, in many different ways because I just love the fact that you can take something so classic and reinterpret it in so many different ways. And also sort of make it more hard. I mean, it's a hearty, heartier dish. Yeah, people, like this people... is more, this is my classic shakshuka. You usually see shakshuka with a tomato uh, base, a tomato or pepper base. And I finish it with garlicky tahini and I put dill on it. I also season it with curry powder and Aleppo pe uh, and harissa, which really like adds a lot of body and like beautiful heat. Um, but obviously I had to do another version. I have, so I have the classic, I have the green, and then I have a masala shakshuka with a cilantro mint chutney, which is, that's definitely more of a dinner shakshuka because the sauce takes a little bit more time, but it's amazing. It's a coconut base. It's incredible. That sauce is also amazing with fish. Um, and then I have the lamb shakshuka with lemony yogurt. Like that's also incredibly um, satisfying. A little bit more on the kind of rich side, but the yogurt breaks through that richness and really kind of creates like more of a bright um, kind of flavor and a little bit of an escape from the richness, you know? I always like to balance like acid with a rich flavor. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what do you think was the most important thing that you wanted the book to convey, Eden? You know, I, I really wanted the book to come across as fun, approachable, and just, you know, I am not a, a, a perfect cook. I'm not. Well, you're not a fancy person. No, I'm not a fancy person. And I, really I mean, like, style and fanciness is, a di are we taking our eggs out? I'm checking on them. Let's do like one more minute. So okay. I'm not, I'm not a fancy person. For me, the things that like I really gravitate towards is effortless, like something that feels effortless and also accessible, but also cool. Like I want it to be accessible and I want, That's what I was saying. Cool. I just, I just don't want people to pick up this book and be like, I can't connect with this because I can't make this. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I want you to know that I'm not perfect and my shit doesn't always look great. And we can all make this food and we can all enjoy food that makes us feel good and has a lot of flavor. You know, there's a lot of bold flavors in here. It's not about technique. It's about pairing really interesting, yummy ingredients together that really stand out and will pop. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how you came up with the name Eating Out Loud. Ooh, I love that people keep asking me this question. Because oh, I is that right? I was going to say. No, you... it's a good story. So I, Ido and I went to Cafe Mogador in Williamsburg. Oh. And we were having brunch. And... Like we just sat at the table and we just wrote down like so many different words that we really felt like ca captured the energy of this book, of the food and of me. You and, nailed it. And we really, really wanted 
you know, I think one of the first words that jumped out at us was loud. And it's just funny. I'm picking my herbs, by the way, for my garden. I see. It's just funny because I have been told my entire life to use an indoor voice. And I have oh, no, me idea, too. no idea what that is. No I, idea. I know. I'm always, I, I have the, I've always had the loudest voice in the room. I get it. It's Mediterranean. Didn't, didn't you get, I used to get, um, I was the one that always got caught in school for talking. Oh, I got You know, because they always, they always hear your voice, you know? Oh, I was doing everything in school that was not right. And I was getting caught for everything in school. I was such a troublemaker. But anyways, I just felt like loud. You know, when I want people to cook from this book, I want them to feel like we're all at the dinner table together, enjoying this food. There's great music. Everyone's yelling on top of each other. Everyone's using their hands to serve themselves and to eat the food. There's Family stuff style. on the table. There's tons of beautiful color, very... Um, lots of texture. There's just, I just want people to feel like wherever they're eating this food, they're at a home and they feel like they're at home. Well, I think, or, okay, I'll check on mine now. If you're checking on yours, I'll check on mine. Yeah, I think mine's done. Yeah, definitely done. Okay, how does yours look? Wow. Look at you. What does yours look like? We did it. We did it. That's right. We so shucked now, shuka together. I can't so believe we shucked shuka together. We're shuck shuka baby. So now here's where the magic happens. I don't know if you kept the fennel fronds. Did you? I didn't. You know, my fennel didn't have that many fronds, but I'll, I'll go and grab what I have. No, whatever you have. It doesn't really matter. I just like finding uses to be, to. How about I'm using one hand here. How about some how about um some dill frond garnish? That's beautiful. I I'll, I'll take any herb. Any okay, What do we do? Oh, I have some pars I have some extra cilantro, right? That That's what I'm going to use. Okay, so I, put, I like to I like to put the fronds on top and I like to finish with some beautiful cilantro. You mean on the egg? You, you want to see the frond on the egg? Wherever, just like this, scatter. Go crazy. Oh, scatter, okay. We're just playing up that greenery. And then okay. what I want you to do is take this garlicky tahini, this beautiful green tahini. Look at the color. Oh. And we're just going to garnish loosely. Just kind of go for it right on oh, top. Oh, okay, okay. Because when people dig in, I want them to get lots. Um, my mom is going to kill me. I'm getting tahini all over her stovetop. So just put it everywhere? Just like, it doesn't need to be like too much. I kind of like doing a little bit. Dollops of? Kind of Jackson Pollock situation. Got it. And then I just like to finish with a nice drizzle of olive oil just to keep that kind of a little, just a little bit sexy, you know. There you go. And there you have it. It looks a little, it looks a little messy, but it's really delicious. Let's see. Let me show you mine. There's mine. Wow. There you go. Dinner is served. Dinner is served. So Eden, it was great hanging with you. Um, this recipe, everyone, is going to be on the website now. It's going to be on our Instagram, both in stories and in the feed. And then on Sunday, we'll have more recipes from Eden. And you can also look out for her book on our site, too, in our Glam Gatherings article. Um, Eden, are you going to be cooking this weekend? Or are you having, like... I actually don't time? know yet. I have to double check my schedule. It actually might be, like, a little bit of, like, a calm weekend. But I'll be on social media doing all the, you know... The Instagram yeah. world. Um, okay, good. It's an exciting weekend for you. Congratulations. It's, it's again, an exciting week. There's a lot going on. I'm very yeah. happy. Um, I'm seeing everyone cook the dishes. Guys, please cook the food. Please tag me. I can't wait to see how all this food comes out in your home. And just enjoy and have like a beautiful long weekend. Relaxing long weekend. Good vibes. Good send off. Good vibes. Thank you, honey. Thank Bye. you for having me. Of course. This was fun. Sending my love. Love right back to you. Bye, baby. Bye.